Hey y'all, welcome back. It's Wednesday, so you know we're, we're winging, winging it. it. <laughs> Today we're coming up on two years of owning our Tiffin Breeze 31BR. Woo! <laughs> So we thought this would be a good time. We've had a lot of people lately asking us questions about our experiences with the Tiffin and specifically with the Tiffin Breeze. And so we thought this would be a good time to sit down and talk about this past year and how's it, how it's going for us with this motorhome. Yeah, so stick around. <laughs> Okay, you know the rules of winging it. Before we get started, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the timer on my phone for 10 minutes. We will talk about the topic. When the timer goes off, we'll wrap things up. It's really simple, unedited, unscripted, and you get what you get. <laughs> so, 10 minutes on the clock. We're winging it. <laughs> well, first of all, I want to say... I mean, it's hard to believe that we've already owned this breeze for two years. Another year has just flown right by. I mean, it is unbelievable. And, okay, so if you're fairly new to our channel or you haven't gone back and checked some of our older videos, um, we have a playlist on our experiences with this motorhome. So why we chose it, um, how we packed it to live full time, um, what we thought about it after one year. Yeah. And uh, so I'll link to all of those in the description in case you're interested in getting more information. Um, but yeah, I mean, another year has flown by and um, it's, it's unbelievable. But I tell you what, so far this has been, it's worked out great for us. Yeah. And in some of the past videos, you'd, we tell the story of the reason why we picked the breeze here was was size. It it was the smallest diesel pusher out there at 31 and a half feet that was still being made today, and that has that really paid huge dividends this year. This was the year, this past year that it made a huge difference. Um, because we got to go into a lot of the national parks. And I don't just mean into the national parks. I mean, we camped in the national parks. Right. And that was probably the number one reason why we went smaller. Right. And so the Breeze, in case you're not familiar with it, it is a Class A diesel pusher. Um, we have a 2017 Tiffin Breeze 31BR, which is 31 and a half feet long. But the Breeze models are also shorter in height than a lot of the other Class A motorhomes. Well, than all of the other Class A motorhomes. We're 11 foot 7 inches tall. Yeah. And we're also more narrow than all of the others. Yes. So maneuverability and getting into some of those places where there may be a lot of rocks or trees or some wines in the road or, you know, some smaller campgrounds. In some of the national parks, we had pulled through sites, but it was more of a, almost a U-shape pull through, you know, than, yeah. a, than a smooth stretched out. Well, what, what was kind of funny was, so this year was a, well, this last summer was the first time that we went into several national parks and the very first, when we got into, I think it was Yellowstone, when we got into Yellowstone, we go in to get our, you don't get to pick your site. They just, they pick it for you. And so the guy, they go through all these things they about the bears and everything and all the rules and but then he he says well you're in sight number blah 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 whatever it was and he goes good luck <laughs> <laughs> you know because he's like you know you're 31 and a half feet good luck and but we I mean we fit in it but it was tight mm -hmm. I mean it was tight there was uh, a couple different campgrounds at Yellowstone that we were in that were tight but we fit mm -hmm. oh yeah and and you know that's why i'm glad we before we had a 35 foot motorhome and i'm glad that we downsized to this size um now it's funny because in this last year we have camped we've lived in it full time the whole year uh we've camped everywhere from sea level uh at the coast 
to the mountains. Um, we have dry camped. We've camped with full hookups and everything in between. Um, and so I feel like we've really tested it out pretty well. Yeah, and we actually used the solar, you yep. know, because when we bought it, it had 320 watts of solar. We bought it used. We bought it used, and, you know, that came into play. Uh, now, there were some of the spots in the national parks that were so wooded that they it didn't come into play. Right. So we had to run our generator a little bit more. But, again, that's another... Plus, at having a, a Class A, you know, we have a generator in case we have to run. But in the national parks, you can only run your generator, I think it was from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. I'm pretty sure. It, I think it's 8 to 8. So after those times, so you got to charge your batteries and stuff in between those times. Or, or for us, we had to charge all of our devices during those times and stuff. Because the one thing about the breeze that, we will change one day because and it's different from a lot of the other class A. Yeah, we we are well. The different part is is how this particular coach is wired when you're running off the batteries. Uh, the breeze, the the batteries, and the inverter only pretty much only power the TVs, which there's four of them in this little coach, which is crazy. And the uh, refrigerator, because it has a residential refrigerator. So this particular coach comes with four 6-volt batteries instead of just two. comes standard with two if you don't have the residential refrigerator. But when you get the residential refrigerator, it goes to four. So we have four 6-volt batteries. We want to change those out to lithium. Eventually. Eventually. But what she was saying where we're different than most Class A coaches, like the last one we had, um, the the inverter and stuff pretty much ran everything in the coach except for probably the microwave because mm -hmm. that would pull too much from the batteries. But we could plug into almost any outlet. We could still charge our phones. We could still charge our laptops or whatever. But that's not the case in the breeze. Um a lot of your regular plugs are dead now, now, if you're not uh, on generator power or uh, shore power. Now, we found a way around it because, you know, some of the plugs that's using your TV TVs, they you can unplug that and you can plug your device into it. So we, And we actually discovered a few of our plugs and USB ports or a couple. That, that are powered. Yeah. So that we didn't realize were until we just needed to know. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And so this last summer was the first time we were able to really utilize this coach the way we had always envisioned using it. And that is in small places, in national parks, of boondocking. Mm -hmm. And I mean, for the most part, it scored an A. Uh, we loved it. We never ran out of battery power. Now, granted, I will say, we had to work our parameters. We had Grammy with us and stuff, so we were probably using a little more power than we normally would. So we were going dark pretty early. I mean, like 9 o'clock or whatever, we, we were turning the lights off, you know. But that's a good point. So we have this small, for a Class A, motorhome, but my mom, Grammy K, spent almost two and a half months with us uh, over the summer last year. Yeah. And we have, in case you haven't seen her, a rather large 85-pound <laughs> dog, a star. And so we did fine. Even yeah. in a small space, having three adults and a big dog was really no big deal And the for tank us. sizes were, were fine. Mm -hmm. I mean, because all these were dry camping in the national parks. So... We were able to sustain with our tanks and then dump in between each time changing to campgrounds. Mm -hmm. That worked out great. So, I mean, it really worked well. With lithium batteries, we could do better. The one thing, obviously, your your battery bank does work the lights in the coach. I mean, that, but that doesn't have to go through the inverter. Uh, but it's just like, it's the same on all coaches. I mean, the lights inside will work off your batteries. But... On not just coaches. I mean, a regular. If you get a a, a pull behind or a first pull behind, yeah, your your lights run off of the battery that you have. So, if you followed us for a while, you know we had one major breakdown um, this year, 
and it ended up being a problem with our diesel exhaust fluid system. Yep. Uh, we got stranded in Grand Teton National Park. Believe me, there are worse places to be stranded. Yep. <laughs> but that was really the only major issue but that, that we had with the coach that this was, year. That was pretty major, but it all worked out. It all got covered under warranty, so all was good. And we did learn an interesting thing about this particular model. Um, in that process, our coach has a 275 horsepower Cummins diesel engine. We never really thought much about it before. We knew it's a small diesel, and a lot of people ask us, is it enough? It has been. Yeah, yeah. it's been fine. Even in the mountains. Pulling the Jeep, no big deal. Um, but... Through all of that process, we learned that it's a an automotive diesel, that yeah. they call it, which is different from the larger diesels that you normally find in a Class A diesel motorhome. And that became an issue when we did break down, and it cost us a couple days, probably, because they didn't have exactly what they needed to re- Oh, our time's up to re-upload firmware. But and really, it was only... A delay of them getting that particular vehicle. Right. Once they got that in, then they were able to do it. One other point I wanted to bring up that we mentioned before in the last video, the one-year video, is we wanted to get the Tiffin into Red Bay to experience that, which we did. And mm -hmm. we have some videos on that, and it was exceptional. Absolutely. And, and that, that is... Go ahead. That's another reason why we bought the coach, because we really felt like the Tiffin name, the Tiffin family would back up the product, and they absolutely have. And on that side of things, it's been an A+. Plus. Absolutely. So would we buy a Tiffin Breeze again? Absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I mean, 31 and a half feet also. I mean, is that enough to live in full time? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, we could live in smaller, <laughs> Yeah, we, we could, no doubt. Um, but it is nice to have that space. And one of the things I really appreciate about this particular model is that when the slides are in, we can get to really anything yep. in the coach. With the really, maybe the only exception being the storage that's underneath the dinette seats, because we have a booth dinette and a couple of the drawers in the bedroom. But other than that, everything's accessible. Yeah, Stacy can get to the refrigerator if I need something to drink when we go down the road. She can get to the bathroom if she needs to go to the bathroom. You know, so all that, and we have uh, stayed overnight in a parking lot and not had to take the slides out and we were able to do it without Absolutely a problem. Absolutely fine. So it, you know, you, I prefer the slides out, but it, it is doable without the slides out. Yes, it is. So, I hope that answers some of your questions. Um, we are loving our Breeze so yes. far, and we've met a lot of other Breeze owners out there who've introduced themselves, and we I have. hope y'all are loving yours as well. And if you have any other questions that we can answer about it, be happy to answer them. And I'll also link to all of the other videos that we have about our experience with this motor coach. So thanks for joining us, y'all. We'll see you on Sunday. Until then, safe travels. And happy camping. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye.